have a big day ahead of me and it's super rainy today so let's do a little get ready with me while I talk about what's been going on with me recently I'm going to the doctor today at 12 for a checkup to see how my meds are doing with I have new meds and it's been really nice having these new meds it's like, wow, I'm starting off so intense. So I have been having kind of a hard time sleeping and that's because I clench my fists really tightly when I sleep. You know, like when you have a really crazy arm workout and your arms are so sore and you can't sleep and you can't move, I'll wake up feeling like that. When I was at the doctor, I was like, hey, like this has been happening, I don't really know what to do about it. And the doctor was like, were you abused as a child? And I was like, what do you mean? Because yes. And she was like, yeah, yeah, that's a sign of you're trying to protect yourself while you're sleeping. And a lot of kids that have been abused have this thing. So <laughs> here's the muscle relaxers. You are like, whoa, what happened? How did we get here? Oh my God, I have a pimple on my lip, but hold on, I'll pop it. No, I'm crying. You think we can blend the tears in with the foundation? I got my prescription and I have been sleeping so well. That combined with discipline, <laughs> I guess discipline is the best one to say. Uh, I've been getting up today. I got up at 5.50. If you know me, that's insane because I'll get up, especially in the winter, like probably like literally at 10.30. I haven't said anything because it's not like I woke up at 5.50 one time and I want to brag about it. I'll never do it again. <laughs> it's been consistent. Since daylight savings, I've been getting up at 5.50 and before that I was getting up at 6.50. So I am really getting a lot better at getting my sleep. Now the sus part is I'll get in bed at 8 to 20, 8 30. I've talked about my seasonal depression before and if you also have it, it's dark at six o'clock. I can't go for my nightly walk so much so the goal is to have everything be cozy but I'm getting up a lot earlier so my days feel longer and I know that's what regular people do so I'm not breaking the mold by any means but for me it's a pretty big step. I've had bad OCD and also from my OCD, bad depression. And I could sleep for 12 hours at a time, especially when I was in high school. And when I was in college, it was just not possible to sleep that long. I was very sleep deprived. After graduating college, I just started sleeping in a lot because I work for myself, I can. I've got a lot of dry patches. One thing about me is my skin's super oily generally. And then winter hits and I am scaly and dry. What was I talking about? What about OCD and depression? Oh, I was sleeping a lot. You know when you just live with constant depression, you don't think anything's off, you don't know any other way of life, so you just feel fine. Like people might be here and you're here all the time, but you never get here, so you're just feeling like you're normal. Anyway, I wasn't feeling like there was anything specifically wrong. I was just always overwhelmed and you know, thought everybody else feels this overwhelmed. I'm not saying I'm not overwhelmed now, but I'm overwhelmed for different reasons. <laughs> my OCD really affected my work quite a lot and I didn't know what it was. I just thought I sucked at everything and everybody else was much more responsible than me and I was just lazy. And as I started going to therapy just to talk about trauma and thought I might have, um, what did I go in thinking I was gonna have? I went into therapy thinking maybe I'm autistic. A lot of girls are not diagnosed. My parents didn't believe in going to the doctor for diagnoses and girls mask their autism really well. I went to a therapist and said, let me know, <laughs> what am I, what's happening? She gave me some tests. She's like, you don't, you're not autistic. You have OCD. I never thought that that's what I was gonna get a diagnosis for. And it was a very weird feeling to be like, are you sure? Are you sure about that? And the more I learned about it, the more I was like, yeah, I do have OCD. I'm not a tidy person, organized person. So, you know, I never thought I was gonna have, I could have OCD because all media depicts OCD as like the Oreos in the cookie jar, right? <laughs> I'm not anal about things. I am, but not, not in that way. Whoa, I just put on a lot of blush. I got overzealous. My OCD, a lot of the way that it manifests is from perfectionism OCD. And a lot of my compulsions are just in my head. I don't like knock on things three times. I don't have to close the door a certain way. But I realized, I don't want to tell you about it all. If you have OCD, you know, like there's some dark thoughts there and you feel like a terrible person all the time. And you're not, it's just a literal mental illness. And once I found out a lot of the things that I felt were because of religious trauma, like that's why I have a lot of my OCD, it all started clicking. One of them, I love Nikki Nasty on YouTube, and so I watch her all the time, and she's like my alter ego, except more outspoken. But she was talking about having this fear of pregnancy, like with her OCD. I realized I also, I too have had a fear of pregnancy since I was a teeny tiny baby. When I was younger, I was convinced I was going to be the second Virgin Mary. Like, I just knew I was going to sit on some toilet seat and not put enough toilet paper on the cover and get pregnant. If you don't have OCD, if you've never had these thoughts or this religious trauma, you might be like, what are you yapping about? But it's because of how much sexual purity is stressed in the church. And I literally thought I was 
gonna die if I got pregnant. Since then, I've just had a bigger and bigger distaste for the idea of being pregnant. When I was younger, I was so sure that that was gonna be my fate and I was gonna get in so much trouble. I didn't even have sex, but I was pregnant. Something I didn't know was a manifestation of my OCD. I also have perfectionism OCD. I feel like I always have to say the right thing and I have to have the right response. I can't have people misunderstand me. So that makes social media difficult. Everybody misunderstands you on social media. People are just rude for the sake of it. I have a bad time. I'm not one of those people that loves to be contentious. And I want to be, but I don't know how to be there yet. And there's other things too. I'm not telling you about all my intrusive thoughts and my compulsions because there are a lot. The crazy thing is that most of my girlfriends also have OCD, like diagnosed, not just, oh, I feel like it. Diagnosed OCD. We're all on medication for it. 60% of my girlfriends. And you wonder, What's the common denominator? Religious trauma. I have a friend who we bonded over the fact that we both have OCD. And so we started telling each other, what are our intrusive thoughts? And we had all the same ones, all the same ones. The same gross, dirty, perverted, intrusive thoughts both of us did. Basically everything that Christianity tells you to be scared of. This is also not a commentary of being a Christian, obviously. And there's a lot of really nice people who are Christians, but I had a pretty terrible childhood, especially teenage years. I didn't think I was gonna make it past my teen years, if you know what I'm saying, and things got better. For me, it was difficult to even understand I was feeling depression because my life is just so much better than it was when I was living with my family. Every time I sit down to film a get ready with me, I just get so deep and it's a problem. And then I scrap them all. I'm like, you don't need to know all this information about me, but maybe you care. I don't know. When I graduated college, especially when I stopped talking to my parents, like all this crazy anxiety left me. I weighed the lowest that I had ever weighed in my life because I didn't eat because I was anxious. I just wanted to make sure everybody was happy and nobody was misunderstanding me and I wasn't doing anything wrong. So it's kind of a journey to be, I'm turning 26 actually on Monday. It's a journey to be here and to be accepting of myself and understanding why I have felt all these ways. But fast forward, I got uh, diagnosed last summer, not this summer, last summer. It's been so much better since figuring out what medication works for me and also doing exposure therapy. I really liked my therapist. She was really good for OCD, but there were things that I would talk to her about that she just did not understand at all. And you're gonna laugh at me for this one. I have a fear of being perceived. That's ironic because of my job. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a huge fear of being perceived. And when I try to talk to my therapist about it, she was like, I don't know what you mean. I've never experienced this. She was really nice, but she just wasn't the right fit. I haven't found a therapist that I know will address what I want to address in therapy. So I haven't been to therapy in a while, but she taught me a lot of good principles on dealing with my OCD. I'm not saying I'm perfect or anything, but it's gotten a lot better because I can recognize the patterns of thinking and have also learned how to expose myself to these things without being like super scared of them. I hope none of this is feeling like medical advice because it's not, it's just how I've been feeling. So with the combo of my OCD medication and with my muscle relaxers for going to sleep so that I don't clench in my sleep and not be able to sleep plus with like a lot of diligent work on my part to be like going against all of the things that I feel like doing like sleeping in or uh, being depressed or not taking care of myself kind of thing I've been doing really well this might seem silly but I'm in like the first point in my life where I feel like I can afford to be disciplined with myself because I am not just trying to survive I have not been able to be disciplined with myself in a way that revolves around just my own good, like mental well-being, physical well-being. I haven't done any of that because all my energy was going towards being the best I could be for everybody else's expectations of me. And now that I don't feel those anymore, like those things don't affect me as they once did, I can actually take a step back and discipline myself on things that I literally just did not have the time or energy to do before. If I work from home, there's no need to get up at 6 a.m., right? But it makes my day longer, lets me have time to go on a walk, lets me get off work at a reasonable hour, not like 9 p.m. I've been proud of myself. I'm also really grateful because I was really struggling with my OCD when I started writing my book and it was just not good and it all happened at such a perfect time that I got a new editor for my book who was just exactly what I needed in the moment and especially when I was actually getting better with my medication. So it was the perfect storm of a new editor who her feedback was really important to me. I do really well when people are stricter or harsher on me if I get actual critique, not if people give me niceties and then like do a compliment sandwich with like, oh, you need to change this thing. I do really well when people are like, you know, not being mean, obviously. You're mean, I'm not gonna listen to you. But if you're telling me exactly how I can seriously improve, I do really well with that. And this editor did exactly that. She set me up for success. And I think this book is so much better than it would have been if it was released back in 2022, which was I think around the original release day. And that's not to say that my previous editors were not good, but that's to say that I have really grown in my 
strengths since I have my OCD diagnosis. Isn't medication a wonderful thing? Oh, I've been taking my D3. I've talked about this, I think. And so I take my D3 in the morning. I take my melatonin at night. I need to get back on the zinc, but I've been gotten sick since I started taking D3 and I always get sick. I get sick so easily. So I know that the next one, and I have the supplements, but they're disgusting. They're like the huge gross chalky pills. I have zinc supplements and I know those are supposed to also help your immune system. I have a terrible immune system. I don't want you to think I'm taking this lightly, but I'm almost at immunocompromised. I work from home. I don't get much exposure to sicknesses. And in general, I'm a pretty sick person. So if you have even the remnants of a cold and you come over for dinner, if you're sick and you come over for dinner and you don't tell me beforehand, I'm gonna get sick. I will, I just will. You can't touch literally nothing. I can stand 20 feet away from you and I will get sick. And that's one of the things that actually like, I'm really hoping doesn't happen over the holidays. It's kind of aggravating, you know? Like I like to give people a warning. If I'm sick, if I'm invited to an event, I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna come because I've had a fever. I was sick a couple of days ago. Does anybody feel weird about that? I don't know how we got here, but, but we did, apparently. How did we even get to the, oh, that's D3, but I haven't gotten sick since I started taking D3, which is, a miracle. Yeah, so medication is so wonderful. It's so cool how our chemical imbalances can make our lives terrible and we can correct those. My depression was not a chemical imbalance. It was reasonable because of my super insane OCD. When I got diagnosed, I was diagnosed with the very low end of severe OCD. It makes your life a uh, living hell vibes. I wanted to share more about my OCD, but it's, it's such a sensitive topic for me that I always sort of tear up a little bit or feel... I mean, if you have it too, you know, just feel shame for things. Even talking about it, I'll feel like ashamed that I haven't done everything that I can to be better or I have messed up in the past, especially having perfectionism OCD. It's hard to just to talk about it because I have not been perfect. I need to be perfect. I guess not so much anymore, but it's something I'm actively working on. And it, I don't think ever will go away, but I think it can just become more manageable. How do we feel about my makeup? It's fine. I wish I could have my bangs down today, but it's rainy and they're gonna get really messed up. So my hair's just in whatever today. Oh, I didn't use my setting spray. That's what's different. Tomorrow I'm doing my cover reveal for my book. So you need to check that out because I have an insane pre-order incentive. People that have already pre-ordered can also take advantage of, which is really nice. Thanks for listening. I wish I could be a mysterious person. Unfortunately, I'm not. Thanks for hanging out and listening to me as I got ready. It was very fun. Let's do it again if you want to. What if you're like, stop? Don't overshare anymore. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I put on new videos Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm feeling like soon it'll have to be once a week because I'm getting overwhelmed with two videos, but for the meantime, it's still two. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.